The NAACP has issued a travel advisory to the state of Florida in response to what the organization says are Governor Ron DeSantis' discriminatory and anti-black policies. NAACP President Derek Johnson said this about the advisory yesterday. Well, the governor has uh, perfected the art of doing stunts to gain campaign contributions. Unfortunately, this will impact people's lives. Uh, we should not use race or othering as a tool to weaponize against people. And unfortunately, for a large percentage of the Floridians, that's what he has done. Therefore, we are advising African Americans and others that if you travel to Florida, beware that your life is not valued, that we have a political landscape that could cause harm as we prepare for the 2024 elections to right-size the political landscape in the state of Florida. One MSNBC guest is facing backlash online after she said Florida now amounts to a terrorist state for black and queer people. And I really appreciate the NAACP's guidance uh, on this issue. You know, I just took my family to, to spring break in Florida recently. And I think about all of the folks who traveled there for sun and joy um, and peace and restoration. And to be reminded that actually this is getting to the point where Florida is about to be a terrorist state to, to many of us here in America. Certainly as a lesbian, as a black woman, I don't want to have anything to do with the place. Meanwhile, over on Fox News, Florida Representative Byron Donalds pushed back against the advisory, calling it stupid. This is just really stupid. It doesn't make any sense. Look, I've lived in Florida since 1996 after I graduated high school. Uh, I went to college, um, got married, started a career, you know, lived normal life, went to church, raised kids, uh, coached sports. You know, yesterday when the Miami Heat, they were actually, and congratulations to the Heat going up 3-0 in the Boston Celtics, by the way. But when the Miami Heat, you know, were beating down the Celtics last night in Miami, TNT was showing footage of different boats in the water. Mm -hmm. And on a bunch of these different boats are black people having a good time out on the water. I don't even know what the NAACP is talking about. This is silly and it's dumb. It's political. It makes no sense. We should be focused on making sure people actually have the opportunity to achieve, which Florida is actually doing and thriving in way better than, than other states, let's say New York or California or Washington State. We're doing a significantly better job helping black Americans succeed. Um, and it's not just about me, it's about all the millions of black people that live in our state. Mm -hmm. Really enjoyed the remarks from the previous clip we, we played, the woman saying, Florida's a unsafe for black people, terrorist state. I was just there on vacation, <laughs> but it's far too dangerous. <laughs> it's reminiscent of, of, uh, of during COVID of, of a, a certain kind of liberal who is like Florida, you know, where Ron Death Santis is just <laughs> allowing the Rona to, you know, the Grim Reapers falling around people on beaches. Yeah. Yes, I was just there, photographed there, um, having a, a good time, but it's not safe for you. Yeah, look, I, I think it's ridiculous. Um, it's obviously an exaggeration and overstatement. I think it has always been the case that people want to spend time, move to places, vacation in places where they feel respected and, what, and that their cultural values are respected. It is not news that people who are gay or who belong to some other marginalized group often avoid parts of the country where they feel like they're going to get stared at, scrutinized, or even criticized. And, you know, we have a long history in this country of something called the Green Book, which was a travel guide for black people so that they would know where they could stop on the road and actually be served and have accommodations in a country that was segregated. I mean, it's nothing new. Is that new. what that movie's about? It is what that movie is about. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I haven't seen it, but I do love me some Viggo Mortensen. The point Same. is that I, I, you know, this is, this is nothing new. And of course, on the other side of this, Conservatives have been wringing their hands about liberal cities in disarray and acting like if you walk into the New York subway, you're going to get a crime done to you and how San Francisco was a wasteland despite $8,000 apartments and people very much still wanting to live there. Um, well, that's part of what makes it a wasteland. No, no, that, it's that, so, that, it's that so is expensive a, to that move is there. A problem. I mean, the idea that like, <laughs> demand is somehow yeah. shrinking because these places are no longer desirable. It's a wasteland it's, of it's zoning bizarre. requirements. <laughs> <laughs> sure. It's, it's, a, it's a wasteland of affordable housing for sure. Um, so, you know, people are going to hand ring and say this kind of stuff. What I'm most frustrated about, though, when I'm watching um, Derek Johnson, NAACP president, on TV and vang against Florida is that I noticed he's been very silent over the last few years when there have been real uh, disappointments for the black community under the Biden administration. Uh, famously, not famously enough, because the uh, mainstream media declined to cover it, and many prominent journalists ran cover for Biden when this happened. But there was a really explosive leak of a call that Biden had with 
you know, about 10, I'd say, civil rights uh, leaders, including Derek Johnson. Kamala uh, Harris was on the call. Uh, Sherilyn Eiffel, uh, head of the NAAC Legal Defense Fund, was on the call, and uh, Al Sharpton was on it, and others. And during that call, various leaders, including principally Sherilyn Eiffel, made very specific entreaties to President Biden about what he could do using executive authority, because at the time it wasn't clear that we were going to that the Democratic Party was going to uh, win Georgia. This was before that uh, runoff election. Uh, that he could do with his executive authority to help Black people and to advance portions of the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. Remember, this was the year 2020. Joe Biden was very short-tempered. He cut her off. He interrupted. He told her that he's been fighting for black people longer than she has and that he, they, the people on the call should basically defer to his authority. They all sat there. They took it. They didn't say anything in response. When the call was leaked, even though it embarrassed them pretty horrifically, none of them took that opportunity to speak out against Joe Biden. They've been running cover for him since. Joe Biden set a one-year deadline from the George, of George Floyd's murder to pass the George uh, Floyd Justice and Policing Act. He, of course, did not. It's dead on arrival, as along with a bunch of other voting rights legislations and things that the people on that call stated as their primary communities. Joe Biden said he was going to cancel 100 percent of HBCU debt. He has canceled not that, none of it. He, he, he proceeded to pursue a student debt policy and, and program that would enable it to get caught up in the courts instead of, again, using executive authority like he could have done on day one. Um, and he has been a colossal disappointment for black Americans. And we saw a recent poll that shows that black Americans' interest in voting for Joe Biden is low compared to other groups. So instead of worrying about what Ron DeSantis is doing in Florida, I think that the president and the NAACP should probably be a little bit more concerned with how ostensibly his own party has betrayed the interests of his community. Hmm. Well said. Yeah, I think uh, I like you. It's just a kind of ridiculous stunt. It's getting in on the um, the Florida fever, um, the the lust to be angry with Ron DeSantis. Which, look, you can criticize him for his policies, but the idea that like Florida is now Afghanistan or something is just utterly absurd. And those travel um, warnings and for it not, it other not countries are silly to kind anyone. of too. Yeah, America will say don't go to right. And this isn't America. This is just an interest group saying this. No, 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 for sure. Yes. But I'm saying there's a certain parallel to, I mean, I have lived, I mean, I'm biased, but I have lived a number of places that America says you shouldn't travel. And in all places, in all countries, there are places you go and places you don't go, yeah. precautions you take, et cetera. And so I'm sure there are parts of, Florida that are not the safest. There are parts of New York that are not Noma the safest. I live in Noma and Capitol Hill. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But you know, everyone likes to get on TV. I lived in and... places where I don't feel safe because of the high taxes. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> the wharf is getting crazy here in DC. <laughs> so many restaurants. The wharf, I don't have, does not have um, scooter uh, highways the way I want there to be. Um, oh there's a no-go zone. I won't get into that. You're, you don't care that much. All right, we need representation here in DC, so Robbie can take. Take his complaints up somewhere. Uh, by the way, Fox News hosted a panel of 2024 voters this week. Here's what one had to say about Ron DeSantis's education policies in Florida. Uh, as a Democrat leading toward Biden, what, is, what would you like to see from, from a president? In uh, let's see. I'm going to pick education, and I'm going to say that education is a key issue in our society. So I want no books banned. I'm very anti anything being banned. You don't want your kid to read it? That's fine. I want my kid to read a little bit so of what everything. about like 2,500 books banned so far, Will? Trans, yeah. The trans I, they, advocacy she can, I have one daughter. She can, read, she can read whatever she wants to read at an age appropriate to what she so is. How about like but the any, Bible? But what I if want, we wanted to teach the Bible? I'm Catholic. I've, I've already taught her about the Bible because so, I'm Catholic. But no, what about in so, school? So absolutely. Though? Oh, in school? Oh, no. Oh, no, no. Got separation, have gotten separation, school. separation of church. And then That's all history, the all history should thing. be taught. That is African American history, Native American history, Latino history, um, you know, Asian history, Caucasian history. All history should be taught in public schools. So I'm going to say I'm very pro it's, education. It's so interesting because education will be a topic coming mm -hmm. in both directions. Very pro you education. Describe it differently than I think some many of our other panelists Which means would as that well. DeSantis is a thumbs down yeah. because he doesn't want to educate people on Black history, and so I take that as a well, personal I think this That seemed a little. Like they were talking past each other. I think there was agreement the Bible should not be, or the, the, no, I don't the, the precepts of a religion should not be taught in a public school. You could teach about the history of Islam or Christianity sure. or something. And in the school library, you could have the Bible or the Quran Absolutely. or anything. You're not going to have a class on 
Christian teaching or Islamic yeah. teaching or, or Hindu teaching and, or right yeah, praying yeah. five times during the school day and all that. Yeah. yeah, of course not. But remember, what is what is what is at stake here? Books are being banned from libraries in the state of Florida. So while well, you and I can sit here and say, of course there should be religious texts on the shelf, there should be history books about various different kinds of people and all, all over the world and, and such on the shelves, that is not what's happening from, from a policy perspective in Florida. So she is right. He is making this an issue. The, the, the moderator there was turning it into an issue of what gets taught in school. That's a whole other conversation where I think there's a lot more political, a lot less political of, of a political binary about certain kind of subjects not being age appropriate. And I think mm -hmm. that's legitimate. Like that's for educators and parents to decide what's the best time to learn about certain things. Well, and some, but, and some of the but, books that have been challenged and taken down are, they have pornographic drawings okay, in them. But books not... being on shelves is a different kind of issue. Having books literally taken from a library, if you want to have a section that kids don't go into, move a book from a kid to an adult section, that's a I much mean, more a nuanced library. conversation to have. So you're saying that we should ban books from a library, ban any book from a, a library that's not appropriate for the youngest kid in a school? Is, is that what you want our reading levels and education to be really that everyone's standard is of a five-year-old? I, I don't really care personally either way, but that's what the angry parents are, by and large, right. reacting to. It's not... I remember going to school early because my parents were teachers, and I would sit in the library, and I read pretty much every book in the library. And I remember getting into some of the teenage Judy Bloom books as I was like a preteen, and reading about boys kissing and girls getting their period and all of these kinds of things. And it was like magical that I could explore and like find all of these resources and I would open these books and with absolutely no guidance and it was wonderful. But I promise you I was pretty much the only kid in the school <laughs> who was randomly perusing the shelves and reading anything that wasn't assigned to them. And I think this is a whole lot, a lot of nothing and it's really authoritarian and people want freedom and they want the freedom for their kids to be able to access whatever literature is on the shelves and not have books pulled prematurely, especially since there have been specific targeting of books that relate to, the, for one famous example, a Rosa Parks book just that simply explained how she didn't get off the bus and it's prompted the Montgomery boycott, which is an important historical event, has been pulled from the shelves because it is making, in the argument of some parents, white people feel uncomfortable about being white in a country that up until my parents were children did actually have a racial apartheid system. So our is like the, the discomfort there, that kind of what used to be called snowflake discomfort, gonna get in the way of us teaching real history from the past 60 years? It might be discomfort, but that's to my mind substantially up to the parents. And I, if I was a school system or an educator, I wouldn't want to be introducing to the students things that their own parents are uncomfortable with because well, that it's parent, their kids. Black people are parents too. Yeah. And that parent, and there are a lot of black people to Byron's point in Florida, and that black parent wants their child to learn about all history and not have it Great. sanitized by the governor of the state That's what who, happen, then. whose authoritarian reach is making his personal political decisions what is the standard for public education I want to align educational to options with what the parents and the families want and not everyone is going to want the same thing and I think we have to recognize that and create different options for everyone rather than having some fight at the state or national level about what everyone yeah. should have to go And people through. can withdraw from public schools and go into private schools if they want a very Great. narrow parochial education or whatever it is, but the governor of the state setting what books are allowed to be on the shelf and disproportionately focusing and targeting on books that are relating to Nazism, racism in the United States of America, Jim Crow laws, um, you know, mass incarceration, religions that are not Christianity, you know, the rise of fascism. It becomes very suspicious to a lot of folks why you're wanting those kinds of books not to be on the shelf. What is it about the, that history that you're trying to um, erase from the public well, sphere? Well, if that parent heeds uh, the warning of the NAACP, she should get out of the state uh, at the, because it's unsafe, I guess. <laughs> Circling back to the subject of this segment. Yes. We'll have more rising right after this.